very glad to see you all uh, today and I'm here at this moment with uh, gratitude and humble <clears throat> mind. So like Reverend Ginger said, I have been working at one institute of graduate studies for many years. And we are currently having a retreat with students from Masters of One Buddhist Studies program and aspiring One Buddhist lay leaders. So this is the first time we are combining those two very important groups together. So it is a very meaningful moment uh, to meet all these dedicated practitioners and also one Dharma Center community members and someone join us and online. So I'm very happy to see all of you today. So the topic for today I would like to share is the Iwan Sang Bao in our daily life. So Iwan Sang Bao is the essence of Master Sutta San's teaching and a powerful life force for all practitioners. That is why we, as a one Buddhist practitioners, uh, chant the Iwan Sang Bao. Uh, at every prayer, every Dharma services, every morning meditation services, and also every moment in our life. So I grew up in one Buddhist family. So Iwan Sang Bao has been part of my life from the very beginning. So in one of my oldest memories, I was in the temple with my mother. She was sitting in the meditation hall with many other people and chanting the Iwan Sang Bao. I was about three or four years old, sitting next to her and following her as the chant, as she chant the Iwan Sang Bao. I did not understand any of the words in the chanting, but I remember, I still remember my feeling. I felt comfort and peace. So the first benefit from chanting of Iron Sang Bao is the powerful power of concentration so that we can go beyond our judging mind or thinking mind, even without understanding any of words or meanings. This chanting practice gives us the chance to experience the state of mind, as, which is calm and clear and utterly impartial and selfless like Dharmakaya Buddha, Iwan Sang, our original true nature within us. So you, you may remember the story uh, in the scripture, the Master Sotesan, Discourse of Master Sotesan, uh, chapter 6, verse 13. Long ago, an illiterate peddler of straw sanders was inspired to cultivate the way, so he asked a sage about the way. So the sage told him that mind is Buddha, in Korean pronunciation, Tukshim Shibul. But the illiterate peddler thought he heard three pairs of straw sandals, Jipshin Sebol, very similar, right? So for many years he recited three pairs of straw sandals and pondered over it over and over again until one day his spirit suddenly opened, and he realized that mind is Buddha. So that is why Master Sotesan said that great practice does not depend on specific time or place or mantra, but only on a person's sincerity. But this Iwan Sang Bao is very special for us because this is a summarization of all Master Sutesan's enlightenment. So if we memorize this chant and keep it in our heart, there are many opportunities in our daily life to understand each and every word deeply and the true reality related to those teachings. So for me, Iwan Sang Bao is the powerful teaching and helped me to cultivate my spiritual practice in my daily life. So how we can consistently, sincerely practice? And I reflect on myself, there are, there are two very important moments in our life. 
One is when I'm alone, just by myself. The other is when we are be with others. So two moments. So it's it's kind of our life always. We are alone or be with others, right? So how we can keep our mind those two times very well can help us transform ourselves. So let us think about the moment when you are alone. How do you spend your time when you are alone? So sometimes physically we are alone, but busy creating external or internal distractions, thinking about something, keep thinking, thinking, to avoid uncomfortable feelings, emotions, or fear of boredom. However, all activities to avoid this kind of discomfort are not a real solution for internal peace. So these external distractions cannot give us a solution if we truly being with ourselves without any distraction. We can find our true nature and dwell in a non-dualistic reality and oneness with all other beings. So one of my friend, Dharma friend, shared her story one day. She went to the 10 days Vipassana retreat. So what she do for 10 days with, without any words, just sitting with her body and mind and really absorbing her body. And she found out that from her shoulders to waist, this back, she cannot feel anything. So she just be with this numbness, just watching and watching. So what happened is that one time she really saw her very young child screaming with anger. That's herself. But all family members doesn't like to express anger like that. So she suppressed, pressed down her anger and deny her about not accept she is angry. So her body really contained all angers over and over time. She doesn't think she's angry, but her body knows it. So when she understand, finally understand herself, she can feel a little bit, uh, some feeling on her back. And then after the retreat, she start to talk about what she realized through the retreat, share with others, and recognizing her anger more. Um, and she found a skillful way to connect with others when she are angry. So that helped us to really understand herself well and understand other better. So aloneness, truly be alone by yourself, your body and mind, is the essence of all types of meditative practice. So Buddha said, in heaven above and earth below, I alone am honored. That's one of the koan. And so what does this mean? This is a state of mind of oneness. So there is no separation between me and others. Only true I exist on earth. So ear one, ear one, the circle image, represent the realm of samadhi beyond words and speech. It is the mother nature of all our conscious mind. When we express our thoughts or feelings, we try our best to des describe what it is with some language, but there's always limitation. So we need to figure out what is real meaning by ourselves. For example, one day I heard of someone I didn't have a chance to meet before. And one of my friends explained about that person, the characteristics of this new person. But I did not understand those words fully until I really met this person and experienced um, that person. So the same is true for the taste of food or water or temperature. Like someone said, it's cool when she or her, uh, him drink water and say it's cool. Then we can guess, but we do not know actually 
the meaning until we drink the same water, then the moment of aha, this is it, right? So this true reality is not really, um, it's connected with the words, but true reality we have to experience by ourselves. So we are living in the reality that is beyond words and language. So our practice starts from the state of mind that is free from the judging thoughts. So all languages are great tools for pointing out the true reality. It is like pointing at the moon in the sky, but we have to see the real moon. To apply this practice in our daily life, for me, I let go of my previous perceptions of word or words uh, when I meet, especially meet new people or new situations. But actually, in each and every moment, it's new and never come back again. So when we empty our mind more often, we can find a fresh new reality by ourselves. So our practice starts from this state of mind that's beyond words and speech and true reality. So when we are able to be alone well, then we do not feel loneliness or isolation. Rather, we feel limitless interconnectedness uh, with all other beings. And we start to appreciate the existence of others because we feel the connection. Like when you breathe very mindfully, you feel the quality of air and you feel the connect with other living beings who are breathing right now and trees and all natures. So Master Sutisan teaches us that the manifestation of the truth of Iwan is fourfold grace. So in the scripture, uh, he said, take Iwan Sang as the object of faith and believing in its truth and pursue merit and happiness. If we were to specify the content of Iwan Sang, it is in fact the fourfold grace. And if we were to specify the content of fourfold grace, it is in fact all things in the universe. And there is nothing among the myriad things in heaven and earth or Dharma realm of empty space that is not the Buddha's. Thus, regardless of time and place, we must never neglect to maintain a respectful state of mind and should treat the myriad things with the same pure mind and pious attitude we have for the Venerable Buddha and great masters. This is the great teaching to guide us to understand the non-duality and duality is not two, it's one. When we see the tree, there's an invisible part of the tree. We only see the trunk and branches and leaves and fruits, but we can guess underneath of the earth, you cannot see it, but there is a very, very big root. So this invisible part of the reality is the truth of you one, the essence, and the manifestation in the word is the fourfold grace, but it's one being. So we are actually sharing our life, this living space together on earth, not just human beings, but all our living beings. So we need to learn how to live well together. Ideally, oneness is great, but togetherness is another matter. It is like being aware that the truth of Iwan, our higher self or true self is wonderful, but how to live with all other living beings in our day-to-day -day life is an important matter to really actualize oneness on earth with all different people and all sentient beings. So this summer I met very um, new people, many people from Korea. You may met them uh, 
the Yongsan University students from Massachusetts' birthplace. They visit here one month traveling east and west coast, uh, each campus, and staying at the one institute for months for ESL program, eight students. And when they leave, one of the students present her thoughts, um, what she learned from the US. She said, beauty of nature, gentleness and kindness of people, economic success, and details of historic events in the museum, and everything wonderful. On the other hand, she also saw human suffering through the substance abuse on the street, and racial discrimination, poverty, and all inequality in human society. So she said that she found the importance of mutual well-being and harmonious coexistence to solve these diverse and inequality of human problem in the world. So guess what her resolution? Resolution. She wants to go back to Korea, and she will share her room with the other roommates. And she will always find some difficulty uh, when she finds some di differences with others. Uh, there is uh, some conflict. So she wants to be more kind and understand others better. So. In the same way, in whole world, so many differences uh, you can find. But um, to, there are many, many uh, unreserved problems, issues, and suffering in the world. But the first step to elevate, uh, elevate suffering starts from our internal peace and tranquility through deeper understanding ourselves and others. So this is the moment we need to take an action to really transform ourselves as a living Buddha. If we postpone it to next life, or 10 years later, or a month later, or just tomorrow, then the future will not be much different than today. It's not happening. And there's a like, little moment of habitual uh, pattern of my life. For example, some uh, choice of food. And I see the really delicious food, but it's unhealthy. So mindfully, I would not want to eat them as a mindfulness item. But there's uh, some environment. There is a with young ch like a student, they want to have ice cream <laughs> with me. So I, I can treat them. But it's very awkward that I said, oh, I don't want to eat them, just eat you. Um, so I joined them, uh, sharing the happiness together. That's good. But we need to find some skillful way. If that food is not good for students, good for myself, then there is a, some skillful way to deal with the situation, uh, the better way. But sometimes I just postpone. Uh, I will keep this. My precepts tomorrow, not today. <laughs> doing coffee, for example. I'm doing coffee once a day, but it's not healthy, so not good for my health, so I'd like to not drink my coffee. But some environment, very special coffee today, someone bring it, and she wants to offer and share with me the joy. It's hard to deny <laughs> for that, right? So maybe tomorrow I will keep it. <laughs> and so doing coffee together. And that kind of situation never ending, keep coming and coming. So if you determine you change something in your life, even though very small thing, if you do not do this, this moment, then it's not happening tomorrow either. So. We need to keep this mind in this our mind. In each and every moment, we do our best to choose wholesome action and let go of uh, deluded thoughts or unhealthy habits. And when I, when I prepare this Dharma talk, uh, reflect on even some vow and look at the scripture again, I found a very important thing. In the beginning of scripture, uh, the founding motive one Buddhism, that 
that's the vision statement of Master Sutesan. What he would like to open and teach and guide us with all other sentient beings. So start uh, the founding motive of one Buddhism, start today. In Chinese character, hyun ha means right now, here and now and the future. That's the very starting point of his uh, founding motive. So we are here and now. We have all of us has passed to yesterday and um, other lifetimes. We have all past memories, histories, right? But our practice starts from today, here and now. And our future, we can bring it here and now with deep intention. So when you really deeply think about your future, for example, I prepared this talk many days, and right before the talk, my mindset is just let go of all worries. But if I worry about worst case, right, then the future comes to me. But if I let go of all those worries, I prepare, I do my best, so just sit and talk, right? Then I can bring my new future here and now. So in vision statement of Master Sotesan, in founding motive one Buddhism start from today, here and now. You can bring the paradise on earth here and now, not in the 10 years later, 100 years later. Oh.